Thanks, my name is Ted Mitchell. Uh, I work for the Rugby Football Union and I'm the uh, Facilities Technical Manager within the Rugby Development Department. Uh, my role really is to help clubs uh, to improve their facilities and my specific role within that is to set up delivery mechanisms for them to uh, improve their pitch, improve their floodlighting, improve their clubhouse changing room facilities uh, so we work across all the clubs in the country about 2,000 clubs uh, and we help them ranging from very small grants and very small pieces of technical advice right through to more significant schemes and uh, more significant investment so we have the rugby world cup coming up um, obviously a once in a generation opportunity for for the game uh, and for the rfu uh, and one of the things we're, we're hoping that will happen and we expect to happen is uh, is a growth in the game and a growth in the play numbers of the game. Uh, one of the things therefore that we need to be sure about is that clubs are ready for that influx of new players uh, and there's a number of ways in which we do that but one of the most crucial parts of that is that their pitches are of the right quality and can have the appropriate carrying capacity to look after all those new numbers as a result of the World Cup. A um, number of ways we're working on doing that uh, but crucially one of the things we see as an absolutely key priority is to support club groundsmen with the maintenance of their pitch to effectively support them to make the best pitch that they possibly can. Um, there's a number of ways in which we do that, uh, but one of them clearly is through is through education uh, and crucially through um, helping, trying to make life as easy as we possibly can for them in any way that we possibly can. So, for example, uh, Keith Kent is here tonight speaking to them, advising them, hopefully inspiring them a little bit uh, in terms of them going away and improving their own pitch. Uh, that's the start of the journey, really. They've got to want to do it. Um, once they get past that point, they go away, they're enthused, um, where Keith has talked to them about, you might go away and try and do this, you might go away and try and do that. The new, the new part of this for us is rather than saying to the clubs, well, good luck and, you know, and let us know how you get on, we're trying to set up partnerships now so that actually we can say, not only is Keith telling you to go away and do this, we can make this easy for you. So for example, uh, aeration of a pitch, we want to be able to signpost clubs to either the new Keith Kent club equipment package where they can purchase equipment, potentially with grant support from the RFU uh, to help them aerate their pitch, or one of our pitch improvement partnerships that's here this evening where for the more significant maintenance uh, for the end of season renovation, for the deep tie aeration, they can bring in a contractor that we've signposted them to to carry out that, that piece of the work. Uh, and then in terms of materials, fertilizer and seed, uh, rugby tailors are here uh, to be able to advise them around which seed, which fertilizer and create a discount package around that. So we've got all our partnerships. Obviously Dennis Sysis is, is a key part of that, the Keith Kent package. Uh, so we're here now just before uh, the, the attendees at tonight's event uh, will come out, see the kit in action uh, and, and, and hopefully a number of them will, will see its benefit and, and move forward, uh, take advantage of the package, start to do more with their pitch, feel enthused to do that. But crucially, when we come, for, come to September the 17th and the start of the World Cup, the new injection of interest, a new injection of enthusiasm, the new players will turn up They'll have a real high quality pitch that means that number one they can they can have a high quality experience uh, that means they're going to not only uh, come along and try rugby but they're going to stay in rugby uh, but also that the pitch pitches don't end up being suffering from overuse uh, because of the, the the additional players that have come along crucially with, with partnerships there's, there's there's a number of key ingredients that that makes those partnerships work um, Clearly, we, we want to be working with people that can offer high quality. So in terms of any partnerships, that's a starting point. Can these people help us to do, help us to raise the bar, and help us to help us to help clubs deliver what it is that they need to deliver? That's the starting point. Beyond that then, we've got to understand the actual nature of a typical rugby club groundsman. Um, really what we're targeting with this is typically a volunteer groundsman. The employed groundsman, probably has expertise and already has partnerships in the industry to buy his own and source his own machinery. But the large proportion of, of the volunteer groundsmen, about 80% we believe, don't have that expertise. So as well as having high quality kit, it's really important that they have a kit that is quite straightforward to use, um, that isn't complex for them to use, that they can turn up, they can get it going relatively straightforwardly, they can maintain it effectively. And, and therefore it's not a burden and it's not a, a difficulty and an added barrier for them to do that. And then the third part of this is equipment with longevity. So we want to invest and if we invest we want to get maximum value for money on that. And the more quality the, the, the kit and equipment has, the longer it'll last and the longer we get a return on that investment. Um, so they're the key ingredients we're looking for. High quality, built to last, uh, but also straightforward to use. Um, and then in the partners themselves, um, it's really important that we have partners that want to work with us. Um, 
and that, that's key to this really. We're here on a, a Thursday night in Henley, on Sunday we'll be over in Gloucester, uh, and it's great to know that the, the, the likes of, um, of Dennis Sisis and, and the other partners are here, you know, and they're not kind of making excuses that they've got somewhere more important to be. There's, there's 25, 26 groundsmen in there uh, that are really important to us, and we get the feeling that they're just as important to our industry partners as well. So we're really pleased with, with the new way we're doing this, uh, and it's taken us up a level from just advice to actually advice and then say, now we can give you a way in which you can go and follow that advice. Jason Bowers, I'm the Area Facility Manager for the Rugby Union, uh, based in Area 2 which is uh, north of the River Thames down to the Solent in uh, sort of south central England. Uh, my day job is I manage the Rugby Union's uh, funding portfolio across the 186 clubs in the area uh, and spend a lot of time working with those clubs to try and grow projects right from uh, new boilers to new club houses. So a, a full width of, uh, of projects and of course um, what we're here for tonight is to look at the grounds maintenance side of the, of the work the RFU do and to try and incorporate some of the grounds maintenance products that the RFU support into uh, growing and, and bettering our pitches for the clubs in our, in our charge. So we're here at Henley Rugby Club tonight uh, for basically a, an evening for rugby club groundsmen from across the Thames Valley. Uh, the groundsmen are invited here to work with uh, Keith Kent from the RFU, head groundsman at Twickenham, to look at how they can improve their pitches and their playing surfaces uh, uh, for the coming season, uh, end of season reservations and pre-season uh, uh, works as well. And then working alongside our partners uh, with Ransom Jacobson, uh, Dennis Sisis, um, Rigby Taylor, the seed suppliers and fertilisers, and then first grounds maintenance for the virtual training projects as part of the uh, pitch improvement scheme from the RFU. So the events uh, tonight are really important to attend for the groundsmen because it's, it's in theory when you see it on paper or on video, it, it's easy but no context. And to see the actual operation of the equipment tonight moving forward, it will really help the clubs make objective decisions about what is the right or the wrong maintenance programme to on their pitches at the end of the year. So hopefully tonight's work will really demonstrate for them that the, the right process is moving forward. Obviously uh, in Area 2, we're delighted to have on board Keith this evening. Uh, the work he does in our community clubs has been beneficial to the whole, uh, whole of the area and um, I hope today from today's visits that the 18 clubs or so that have attended this evening will pick up some really good um, ideas moving forward and make their pitches the very best they can be in, in, the, in the areas and allow us to play some great rugby moving forward into the new season. Looking forward to the World Cup year. My name is Keith Kent. I'm the head groundsman of Twickenham Stadium, home of the RFU. We're here tonight to discuss pitch maintenance and we've had a really really good turnout and one of the things that we've demonstrated is aeration. Aeration plays such a key role in the maintenance and upkeep of our winter pitches. With the two pieces of Sisis equipment, the multi tiner and the quadrupipe, I was able to demonstrate to all the groundsmen present just their value and how much more we could do in the fight against the winter and the rains in draining our pitches because I am a firm believer that the more we aerate the better our winter pitches will be. It was great to see so many groundsmen here this evening. One, their interaction between themselves and two, the, the questions that they ask. The questions that they asked were really valued and well put across and hopefully we managed to answer them all. I think it's great that groundsmen share experiences of what they've done, what has succeeded and what hasn't succeeded. But on evenings like this, it's the camaraderie of the groundsman that comes to the fore. What we've built up at the RFU is some really good relationships with our partners uh, who can supply the likes of Sisis, uh, the uh, Slitters and the Spikers and Ransom's Jacobson's, the compact tractor which enables local clubs, our community clubs, to do a job for themselves and manage to get onto the pitches in inclement weather. We have contacts with Rigby Taylors who supply fertiliser and grass seed at a reduced cost because we are collectively a big unit. We are a big buying power. And the RFU with 2,000 or more clubs is such a good ally. So the industry help us and of course we help the industry. In terms of uh, people following up, people becoming involved, the way uh, we've now set this up is we've, we've created a new network, a new team, if you like, of groundsmen called Ruby Groundsmen Connected. Uh, and it's very simple, really, for any, any club groundsman that wants to register, they just email 
groundsmen connected at rfu.com with their name and the club that they're attached to. Uh, if they do that, they'll become part of the team and then that opens up to them uh, all the benefits of, of being part of it. So for example, attendance at an evening with Keith Kent like tonight, um, access to Keith Kent to come into your club to actually deliver a bespoke consultation for your pitch, uh, access to the, to the Keith Kent equipment package and the discount that we've negotiated. So getting the message out is really important for us and, and, and the new Groundsman Connecting Network is helping us to do that. So if anyone wants to get involved in any of this, it's really simple. Email groundsmancconnected at rfu.com and it'll be very straightforward from there and it'll, hope, it'll open up a world of opportunities.